Okay. So, so you were talking about you, you thought that your Mercury is in Gemini and you were making these associations with what you were noticing about how you were thinking and feeling, processing your think thoughts and your thoughts and feelings anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay. So your, your Mercury progressed from Gemini into Cancer at like age three. Mm -hmm. So, but because you're a Cancer rising, it also kind of indicates that like your subconscious operates in a Gemini mm -hmm. way because that's the 12th house. So that kind of that imprint there with that, like your subconscious having this really, the way that your subconscious communicates is like a butterfly. You know, that's how people picture the Gemini is this childlike butterfly with a never ending well of curiosity. Mm -hmm. And the childlike can mean that the curiosity itself behaves in a childlike manner. Or it can actually mean a fascination with children. Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of interesting. But since 2020, your Mercury has moved into Leo. So what I'm seeing with regard to how you're like trying to talk about expressing your yourself, which is what Mercury is about. It's about communication. It's the messenger. You're, you're moved into this thematic process of thematic. I was going to say dramatic. Like oh. I, my, my, how I express myself is so much more dramatic. Like it's just, it's, it's just yeah. so dramatic. And it's just that. like, so even though, so that's the, that's why it doesn't assist my emotional responses because then I take those triggers and blow them bigger than they need to be because I'm, I live for the drama type shit. And then, you know, so it's like before when I like kind of had more analytical aspects of how to process how I was feeling because, you know, I was around more, in I had more intellectual stimulation in remember with my situation with who I was around, I wasn't emotionally invested in that dynamic. So I was able to be more detached in how I was thinking and how I process things. But now I'm coming more from a heart space. So everything that I'm processing is just more on this emotional roller coaster. And it's like, how do you tame the ocean? You don't, but how can you come into balance with it? It's like, you know, yeah, this is a process that you're going to get to enjoy for the next number of years. I mean, I can go through it and see how many years, but if you look at in your chart, you have the sun here and Mercury is now joined the sun mm. in this house. Okay. So this house is saying, the sun is saying I'm in this house. Now the sun is basically ruling our, our present time because presently the sun is in the sky. So we're able to do certain things mm. when the sun is not out, we can't see. And so that's a better idea of how to look at what the sun represents. Mm. The sun draws us, it brings us into the present. So Mercury is now being brought into more of your present awareness in a different way. And that way is Leo, which is ruled by the sun, but that is this process of, of this process of self identity discovery or learning. So learning how to communicate who you are is is really going is is has shifted because i know this is something that you've talked about before in years when as we see now your mercury would have been in cancer but you're going to experience it as a resource now rather than this process that you were going through before in 2019 and and before that the, the process that you were going through is really the womb state because it was still in, in cancer. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, well, who am I? Isn't, isn't one question because you're asking that question for every single moment. And so it's a process again. So cancer is this process of this cosmic egg. Who am I is based on what I need to create. Mm -hmm. 
And so it's also ruled by the moon, which the moon, even though she's considered really close to us and it's right there, there's still this kind of feeling of like the moon's energy is cold. Mm -hmm. There is a cold detachment that comes from the moon. And so when you have Mercury in this, this sign, you're going to get those themes coming through. And so that's why you're just like, I've been in this like detached process of how I communicate. Well, people don't realize how detached the moon is and it's cold. So there's cold and detachment. It's interesting because it's supposed to be the opposite of Saturn and Saturn is also cold, but so it's like kind of this weird thing. Mm -hmm. So that kind of gives you an insight <clears throat> into why they go together because even though the sun is hot and the Saturn is cold, the moon is cold and Saturn is cold. Mm -hmm. So there's, a, there's an interesting play. And, and so these, it's, it's interesting. It kind of also gives you insight into what Capricorn is mm -hmm. because the moon, you know, the moon, the devouring mother too, sometimes. Right. Yeah. So she's like this detached, right? So this is the energy of cancer has a detachment to it. And, and that detachment can go because it's, it's just trying to protect what it's trying to create. So there's all sorts of mythology that gets created <laughs> in order to explain all that it is just this protecting that like you can think, I think of the spider when you break it down. So, yeah. so much, it's just like, here's my egg and I protect it. And that can mean that I'm eating all the things around it. Or it can mean, you know, like some spiders lay their eggs and then they wander away. Like that's why cancer sometimes can be so difficult to pin down because it's, it's really a broad energy. Well, but, the cancer associated to that spider thing, cause it's like, they're like an ocean spider. Anyway, crabs, so. right? I think they look spidery. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that like cold detached, that's why cancer has this kind of like, they, 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 they are associated with this like super clingy overprotective because it's the opposite of Capricorn and Capricorn is clearly this like detached yeah. vibe, but cancer does have a feeling of detachment, but it's different because it's like the moon is right here. And it, but at the same time, it's detached. It's more of like a cyclical detachment mm -hmm. as opposed to just like, I'm just far away. Mm -hmm. It's like the things go up and down and up and down. And it's more of like a, it's like I've, I've detached to how I felt yesterday so I can be whatever I am today. Yeah. Like, kind of a detachment. Like the phases, like it's like, I'm here, I'm going away. All right, now I'm completely gone. Right. All right, now I'm slowly coming back. All right, now I'm back again. All right, now. All right, now. Okay. So now yeah. you've got Mercury in in Leo. So now you get to experience communicating the self from this more of a of a constant like uh, my you know because we were I was showing you my <laughs> truck. So those are and those are gasoline engines and those spark plugs, mm -hmm. right? It's almost like the moon is like a spark plug just because it has its phases when it's on and off, mm -hmm. you know, it's not exactly spark plug, but the, but the sun is like a glow plug in a diesel engine and it's just on. Mm -hmm. So now you get to experience that your, your mercury is going to join your sun. It has joined the sun. And so because when it, it joined in, it's like bringing communication is now much more important than it was for how a number of years because mm -hmm. they were in different houses, but communication is, is going to be more of a present resource for you. Okay. Take the button. Oh, look, it's this year. Okay. Okay. We're in the future now. <laughs> we're in the future. <laughs> Yeah, because 23 is going to be, what, from 27? 
One, two, three. Ooh, okay, look, Damn. Venus is gonna move soon. See, you're gonna you're gonna experience this Venus change. Ooh, okay, one more year. We got something going on over here too. So let's see what's what's going on. Boom. Okay. So 2025, your Venus changes signs. So your Venus is going to move from Virgo in the third house to Libra in the fourth. So Venus has been in Virgo since you were three. And this has brought like a, a beauty to the platonic in the sense of like the rights of the goddess. Mm. So it's like, uh, like how I was saying, it's like virgin isn't what we think of it, but it's definitely like, um, so like if I, if I took one of my rocks mm. and I washed it and I did whatever I felt like was magical to it. And then I put it in a box with a bow and I gave it to it to you as like if I went through these rites and gave it to you it would be a virgin mm. because it's been given something mm -hmm. I see it's like been cleansed in a sense right so Virgo has more to do with bringing in sacred things yeah. and and making making things new again mm -hmm. it's not so much that it's new and it's always been new and it's it's just like popped right out of Do you the mean, oven could that newness be associated to childlike i wouldn't consider virgo childlike the childlike really comes through is that's more of a gemini thing mm -hmm. um But I mean, as far as the perspective, the freshness of it, is it a fresh perspective? Yeah, I would definitely say like, it's got, there's, there's something fresh about it mm -hmm. because that's something about, that's, that's a mercurial thing. Mercury mm -hmm. is about discovery. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it seems to me when I'm looking at Gemini's in general, but even this isn't necessarily always the case. If we're just talking like hardcore uh, stereotypes. Gemini seems to be more inclined to run around the house and literally take pieces of paper and flip them over other pieces of paper and then run around the house not being able to find certain things because they literally just covered it. <laughs> And I'm saying that from experience because I've watched some strong Gemini people do things like that. <sighs> but have I seen strong Virgo people do? See, Virgo had always kind of like made it so difficult for me to put my finger on. Like, what is it? Because it's a good question. Virgo and Gemini are both ruled by Mercury. Mm -hmm. So Mercury is this like erratic because he moves so fast messenger sending messages and and there's like the the air version of it is this like curious looking at everything all the shiny things and then the the earth version is actually trying to bring that newness in to the world okay so bringing that newness in, in terms of here, let me freshen things up for you. Mm -hmm. And if that means like <clears throat> this whole categorizing things up, if I can categorize all these things, then I can keep track so I can make things new and refresh them as they need to be. But see, that's that, like the refresh kind of can give some of the vibe from them too. Because people are always saying that Virgos are so um, repressed. It's kind of an earth thing that people talk about anyway. That earth being so sensual, but then Virgos are definitely the most repressed. But I think that has to do with because they have this like platonic sense about them. 
because they want everything to be refreshed. I mean, I understand. I could see that platonic part because it's like, because as far as like, you have everything you need in the relationship except for that remote romantic aspect. So as far as the repression, it's like, where's the reward for the work? You know, because it's like, isn't that the point? Isn't that the, the sweet spot when you're in a relationship with someone, you know, having that romantic spark part and that connection to kind of be the bomb for when you have those rougher patches, you know, with the dynamic with someone that you're going through and, and, you know, living life with, like having to work with another person and deal with the changes that come with that and the growth that has to come with that relationship, like, like in relationship to you and, uh, your friend hiding stuff. Yes. And, and, but at the same time, it's like, if you don't have that romantic element where you essentially that unconditional love aspect, then it's like, you can only go so far and you don't get that reward system that you feel when you're in love with someone that you're, when you go through the tough times, it's like, we still have love to get us through it. So it's like, I've also had my own dynamic with, you know, individuals in my past where, you know, you have basically a relationship with, but there's no love in there. There's no, there's no romantic element to it, but mm. you're sacrificed so much for someone that you're not. Right, right, right. Like you said, it's, it's a different kind of love. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's, it's not a romantic love. Yeah. It's this like, it's platonic and it's sacrificial. Yeah. It's like, I'm doing all of this for you. But not in this romantic sense. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. There's no other. I don't know what else. That, well put. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So um, there, you've been going through a really long period of time where there you've been attracted to something somewhat of platonic communication mm -hmm. because this is Virgo in your in your house of communication. So this is kind of going again to something we talked a little bit, this is like leading up to some more communication shifts that's going to be happening because when, when this, when your attraction to beauty shifts out of the house of communication and into, um, I mean, like, let's just say how I would interpret it. If you were, if you were like on the career path of being a singer, what I would say is like, this, this shift that you've just experienced with Mercury would be like, okay, you, you're now in a space where you can actually start to find your voice because that's what Leo will provide to Mercury. That is so interesting. That and then, so, so then by 25, Venus will leave this house of, of, of mercurial communicative ability where the the what you are even attracted to in terms of because because it's like your house of communication is always this platonic but you know sacred love and but you've been like exploring that and then it's going to be like you're going to be attracted to more of where you come from because this is this so it'd be like, okay, if you're going to be a singer and now Mercury is allowing you to have that glow plug rather than a spark plug focus on bringing into the present, who am I? What is my voice? And then you're going to be exploring that in almost the platonic ritualistic sense, like practicing and then Libra, now you're going to have exchange. You would, cause this is where you come from, but it's also making beauty in the marketplace. So it'd be like, you could actually come out now. Mm -hmm. You can actually come out and, and bring the beauty of whatever it is you've been doing to market, but you'll probably be singing about where you came from. <laughs> is what I see is like, you're going to be going through you if, with this process. And then if you were, then you'd be like, okay, I want to, um, the, 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 the single 
it's in, in this in this little dynamic here the single that allows this whole breakout from from studying has to do with a song of where you come from hmm. i mean didn't we kind of didn't wasn't it kind of already in my chart anyway that something big was going to be coming in the around 30 ish or something like everything was kind of waiting for this Shift. It's it's interesting how how like you can look at you can look at the same charts in different ways mm -hmm. and find c convergence at different ages mm -hmm. and it's like uh, I like how that works and I think I like and it's just really you know funny how you explain that because I I've just said that like you know, I've made a vision board for this year and it's like essentially just finding my voice and finding you know what it is I'm trying to say or how to express myself in my authenticity. Mm. <laughs> so where's Mercury right now? Where's Mercury right now? Mercury right now uh, is is by the nodes. See, I'm just uh, I'm not having a lot of fun with these some of these charts. Mm. Like, that's why I gotta pull them all up. Cause then, <laughs> then like we did, we just kind of like chatted here, chatted mm -hmm. there. And I'm like, somewhere in here is the thing that you actually want to talk about that I'm ready to talk about with you. Yeah. But we just got to kind of wade through all the different charts to, to get to that point. Mm -hmm. Cause you mentioned some things and, and at one point I was like, Jupiter, I feel like you needed to look at Jupiter. And we were just looking at these. Yeah, that was fun. I'm going to, I'm going to. 